today I'm going to be doing a highly requested video on how to find a man that will spoil you, what you should look for, what you should target. Step number one is to get a man that likes you way more than you like him. A lot of you women think that you can detect this, but a lot of you it seems like you can't. It's very easy for a guy to love bomb you. It's very easy for a guy to convince that he's the one for you. It's very easy for a guy to convince you to think that he's in love with you when really he's not. If you're in the situation where you fantasize about men and you get excited about men only to be disappointed in the end, it shows that you do not know how to detect these kind of men. In my personal opinion and from what I noticed, women need to look for men that if they think about that guy cheating on them and just the thought of him cheating doesn't get them emotional, they have found the perfect partner. Really, because if the thought of him cheating on you doesn't get you emotional, it will automatically make him like you more. It will give you more power in the relationship. And any woman who's honestly that I've met who has, you know, a good life, who's happy, who just feels like in a comfortable marriage and gets everything she wants, she always tells me that she does not care if he cheats. As in, it's not going to get her emotional. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be bothered by it. Nobody wants to be cheated on. It gives you a bad rep. It's embarrassing. You can catch diseases. I'm not saying go be with a cheater. But I am saying that you should think, how will I react if I did find out that he's cheating? And if you don't get emotional over it, you have more power in that relationship and it's a good target. Step number two, if the thought of him cheating doesn't make you feel any way, it means you're not intimidated by him. You're not afraid of losing him. You're not afraid to state your opinion. Even if you'll disagree with it, the men that you don't care about losing are the men you can easily demand to spoil you. You won't be scared to tell him what you like. You won't be scared to tell him when he needs to buy you. Because you could care less what his answer is going to be. And unfortunately, some women, you know, message me and tell me, you know, oh, I'm afraid to, you know, ask him for things, afraid to, you know, get him to buy me gifts. Clearly, it's because you like him way more than he likes you. And I'm not speaking for every woman because I know that there's women out there that generally actually do like their men and still have no issue with, you know, demanding the things that they want. But unfortunately, some women do. And if you're one of those women who's afraid to ask for, you know, cash, you're afraid to ask for gifts, you're afraid to ask for anything, this is the kind of man you need to look for. The kind that you don't like him way more than he likes you. The kind that will not get you emotional if he cheats on you. Because that way it's going to be a lot easier for you to open up and get him to get you the things that you want. Step number three is to find a guy that knows you're out of his league. You have to be way more attractive than he is. A guy that is equal to you or better looking than you is a terrible target and will expect you to pay. The man has to look at you and think that he's the luckiest guy to have you. That you're his dream woman. That he'll never find another girl that looks like you. If a man doesn't think you're out of his league, he won't feel the need to pay. He'll think that he's the one doing you a favor. Step number four is to find a man that you won't need to play manipulation games on. You know those guys that you don't even try to purposely play all these games with and still somehow they're like all crazy over you? You can literally be yourself, say anything that's on your mind and you know they're not going anywhere. Those men are perfect targets. When you purposely try to get him to respect you or like you more, by going hot and cold and playing whatever other manipulation game that's out there, it means you like him way more. And you're just trying hard to switch the roles and get him to like you. Most men, especially the ones that don't even like you like that, will sense and know that you're playing these games. A lot of them will honestly just play along if you still haven't, you know, gotten them laid. Little games here and there, I can understand if you guys have been together for a long time and maybe he's getting bored so you want to spice things up, okay. You know, if you want something out of him and you're playing little games here and there, okay. But if you're in a situation where you're like, this guy doesn't like me enough and I need to play all these games to get him to like me more, you have the bad, like you do not have a good target. There's nothing better than finding a guy who you can literally be yourself completely and you just know he's not going anywhere. Like he's so in love with you, you don't even know why and... You know, like, I have these kind of guys in my life, and I still cannot explain to you. I know the game, and I know the manipulation that's out there, but I'm telling you, I don't even use it on them. 
And even when I try to get the answer out of them, they just can't explain it. There's certain men out there that just literally look at you and you, they just see you as like some kind of goddess or some kind of like, you know, dream woman. And that's the kind of guy you should go for because those are the men who will keep you, they will give you the most security and that's what you need to look for. Because if you're going to be playing all these games, you're going to play them forever. Step number five is if you can't depend on him for help, remove his number or else avoid communicating as much as you can or just distance yourself from him. The men on your list that, you know, will come to help you at like 3 a.m. to help you fix your car or something are the ones that should be on the top of your list. The men that will, you know, help you fix the AC when it's broken are great men to put on top of your list. The ones that are all talk and can't give you anything aside from a headache and a free lunch are to be removed. Men who only buy food are useless. A 14-year-old boy will do that. Men that will help you with like fixing cars or, you know, whatever issue that you have, they want to be there, they want to help, and they're willing to invest and, in, you know, whatever it is that you need help with. Those are the men that need to be on the top of the list. If he's not useful and if he's not somebody that you can, you know, depend on, for help <laughs> distance yourself like these men i either only use them for small things or i completely remove them it's absolute like it's a huge waste of time to be around men that don't make your life easier step number six and surprisingly some women will get mad at me for this but i think a lot will agree is that you need to have your own money nothing is more unattractive than a woman that doesn't have her own money and needs to depend on a guy 100 percent if you literally need and I'm capitalizing this word need to have him pay for things. And if he stops all of a sudden, your nails won't get done. If he stops, your hair won't get done. If he stops, you know, you're not going to have those textbooks that you need for school. You're in a terrible position in life. And these type of women will become so desperate on sticking with the guy because they depend on that guy. When you have your own money, it's easy to leave any guy who you know mistreats you. Maybe switches up on you and decides to become cheap. There's nothing wrong with him, you know, paying for your you know, your nails, or maybe taking you out shopping. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those women who, they literally have to wait until their man comes home just so they can buy eggs and milk. Like, if you're in that position that you need to wait on him just to buy some, you know, few things from the grocery store, you're not in a good position. And it's so annoying when you constantly have to ask a guy for every little thing, especially basics. And what I mean by this is basically... If you're with a man for a while, okay, and you literally have to wait on that couch for hours every time because you can't afford milk and eggs, like you're waiting for hours until he gets home just to buy some milk and eggs, that's what I mean. Like, it does not give you a good look. I don't think that a guy's gonna resent you, but it will definitely make him see that I, I can't speak for that one. I'm not a man, but it's not a good look at all. Step number seven is to get you a nice guy. A guy that you look at and you're like, he's way too healthy for me, he's way too genuine, he's way too predictable, those are the best men. Yeah, they don't provide drama in your life and once you, <laughs> I promise you, once you're married and have children with them, you'll realize how nice and peaceful it is. While all the other women around you are crying on TikTok about toxic men who, you know, play games and use them for sex and follow women full of plastic surgery on Instagram and, what, and you know, whatever else that men do. You know, they're going to be crying about how much it hurts them. You'll be able to look at all of that and then look at your man, being grateful that you don't have to deal with those kind of men that cause, you know, chaos in your life. They're, you know, intimidating, that only think about themselves. Getting a nice guy will make your life easier, lower the obstacles in your life, and it'll just, it'll just make your life easy. Because as you get older, things only get harder, and you need to find a guy who gives you the best security you know, the most healthiest relationship and someone that's boring basically, predictable and boring. If he's not predictable, he's not the one. Step number eight is to get a man with money, okay? If he doesn't have money, basics to survival, everything that I said can be thrown out the window. I don't care if he's Mr. Nice, I don't care if he's Mr. Secure, I don't care if he's Mr. Pick me up at three in the morning. He's useless. He's a loser and he's useless. A man that doesn't have money is useless, okay? Know how to spot them. The men that have money, they don't talk about it. The men that don't have money, they always talk about wealth. They always talk about money. If he's flashy, he doesn't come for money. The men that don't have money always brag about their car, their home, 
their job, the men that do have money, they don't talk about none of that stuff because they don't trust you yet. Why would a man brag about his money when he knows he has it? Why would he brag about it when you barely know him? Because he knows if he brags about it, you're going to use him for it. No guy wants to be used for his money. They want to know, do you really like me for me? So know how to spot them. You know, I know plenty of men who are successful and you wouldn't be able to tell. They walk just like everyone else walks and a lot of them even drive Hondas. Step number nine is to already act spoiled. Like if you do not spend money on yourself, why will any man spend money on you? A man needs to look at you and say, okay, she spends money on herself. So to be with her, I need to come with some kind of money. To be with her, I'm going to have to spend money. If you don't already yourself, you know, get your nails done, do your makeup, just look presentable, look attractive physically, and you don't have like that right character, a guy isn't going to look at you and want to spoil you. Some women honestly look like a complete mess. And they just think some guy's supposed to come into their life and pay for everything. You know, he's just supposed to just come in while she's, you know, overweight. You know, her nails are all chipped and she literally has like black eye bags under her eyes. And he's supposed to magically just come into her life, take her to the salon, take her to the nail salon. Like, it's insane. It's insane. Some women, are, like you guys, come on. Come on, okay? I don't think I need to talk about this too much. So you do need to act spoiled for a guy to notice that, hey... To be with her, I'm going to need to spend money. Now listen, if you want something long term, I promise you finding a man that matches this list will make your life the best life out there. I promise you, you're going to be the happiest woman out there. You're, you're going to feel a lot more ease. You're going to have a lot less obstacles in life. And this is very, very important. Being a mother, having children is extremely, extremely hard. A lot of women do not know how to choose men. A lot of women were not taught how to choose men. And that is why they suffer. And they will teach you as well to suffer. They might lie to you and tell you, Oh, I'm happy and we help one another and we do 50-50 and life is good. If you saw how those women really lived behind closed doors, you would come back to me and you would be listening to me. Sometimes I truly wish that those women opened up their door and let you visit and see what it's like to live their life. Any woman out here can tell you, yeah, I'm happy. No woman actually wants to admit that she's not happy with the partner she chose to marry, okay? Find a man who matches this list. Truly, I wish that a lot of you would see what it was like. There's a lot of women out there who do 50-50 with their man. You know, especially with their husbands, where the husband will get them pregnant. The next day, he will send them off to work. Those women will, of course, protect their man. They're, of course, going to come to my comments or tell you guys, like, I'm happy and I do 50-50 and life is good and we help one another. I wish, I wish you saw what it was like behind closed doors for them. No woman wants to admit that it's hard for her. The only one I can honestly say that is truly happy with the 50-50, if she loves being like the man in the relationship, and you'll be able to tell when the woman is the man in the relationship, and there's truly people who like that and there's nothing wrong. You also need to take a look at those women who are single mothers because there's a high number of single mothers out there right now. And I promise you, it is not a position you want to be in. Take a look at those single mothers and ask yourself, do I want to be in that position? Because I promise you, you don't. It is extremely hard. And it, it, it just sucks. It sucks. I feel like just seeing those women suffer in their marriages or seeing the single mother suffer should be more than enough for you to say, like to really sit back and tell yourself, okay, I really need to, you know, reassess what kind of man that I choose in my life, the kind of man that I want to marry and spend my life with. Trust me, it's much better to be with a guy that's predictable and boring and healthy and so on because maybe that's not what you're used to. But when you have children with him and when you see other women still stuck in there, you know, I don't know how old, you know, crying about how there's no good men out there and how every man cheats and how every man's this and every man's that and how they, you know, 
all, all the other complaints that they have over men, you're going to look at your man and you're going to look at your children if you choose to have children with a big smile on your face saying, thank God that I'm not suffering like all those other women that are complaining about their men. That is the position that you want to be in. Where you seeing all these women crying, complaining, there's no good men out there, every man's a cheater. And you know that you were smart enough to choose the right man that provided you with the lifestyle that you deserve.